Hello hackers. Let's dive into the third video in the kernel module of Pwn College. Modules. So we're going to talk today in this video about kernel modules. Kernel modules are an important part of the Linux um, ecosystem, let's say. Um, what are they? They're basically libraries. Um, conceptually analogous to a um, user space library, right? So you might load uh, libc into your process um, to um, you know, provide certain functionality. In a similar way, a kernel loads kernel modules into itself to provide functionality. Uh, kernel module is an elf file. It has a different extension, .ko instead of .so, but it is an elf file. Um, and it has, you know, uh, segments, sections, etc., just like an elf file. And just like a shared object, a library, it is loaded into the address space of the kernel. It's similar to how a library is loaded into the address space of a process. And similar to how a library is running, you know, as that process, the module is running as the kernel. Um, Kernel modules are used to implement uh, predominantly uh, device drivers, right? If you have a graphics card, um, I have a graphics card. So I will show you looking a little bit ahead, do an LS mod, this lists the modules running uh, on my system. And I have my NVIDIA graphics cards loaded into my kernel, uh, graphic card modules, drivers. Um, so that's one uh, thing that, that kernel drivers provide. Um, file systems, a lot of uh, file system um, implementations are in the kernel. It's faster that way. Um, you can implement file systems in user space using something called Fuse. Uh, I was hoping that's a module. Um, maybe that's compiled in, but uh, I guess my file systems are compiled in, or at least, you know, um, we'll move on from that. Um, file systems can be kernel modules loaded uh, on the fly. Um, networking functionality. Um, so for example, uh, fi my firewall here uh, is, uh, 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 or at least some functionality in, in my uh, firewall is a kernel module. Um, and uh, various other stuff. Um, hardware support for CPU features, um, for, for crypto, stuff like this. Anything that you might want to load in certain circumstances or in certain systems, but not others, works well as a kernel module, as a library. All right, um, so how do you interact with these modules? Because obviously we're going to be talking about how you interact with um, these additions to the kernel exploit vulnerabilities eventually um, when we start putting it all together and then, um, you know, achieve privilege escalation or, or what have you. Um, historically, uh, there's a number of interaction points and we're going to cover a bunch of them. Um, some of them are, are, are historical like this one. Um, historically, uh, it was not too difficult for a uh, kernel module to register a um, syscall handler. Right, so you might suddenly load a kernel module and suddenly have a new system call uh, called uh, sysyan, right? And you could call sysyan with some arguments, and then um, you know stuff would the module would receive that would intercept that system call and do stuff. Um, this is very explicitly unsupported um, in modern kernels. Kernel developers have gone out of their way to make this. Uh, more difficult. It was um, often used by uh, rootkits to um, overwrite the functionality for, you know, open and and so forth to hide uh, malicious software on a system from legitimate users that were trying to find it. Um, so it doesn't. It's not really a um, for over a decade now not a supported way of um, using kernel modules. Um, a kernel module could also um, register interrupts. So you might remember um, in some of the shell coding or jailbreaking challenges, you use the int instruction, interrupt to um, trigger system calls. This was the 32-bit x86 way 
of doing system calls originally. Um, and in Linux, of course, that's int hex 80, int 128, will jump into the kernel um, and do your system call. Well, nothing uh, stops you from doing int other number, right? You can do anything from you know zero to 255. Uh, some of those have other semantic meanings. But for example, you could create a hook for an int 42 instruction. And you could create it by using the LIDT or uh, the LGDT um, instruction um, to create, uh, to load an interrupt handler um, into, uh, into the CPU. So when uh, int 42 happens, the handler, that address of in, within your module of a function will get called to handle that. Um, this is actually super useful for um, retrofitting crazy functionality. For example, there are two interrupts that are uh, that you can trigger using one byte. Of course, int or hex 80 or int 42, that's two byte instruction. Um, but an int three and an int one, actually I don't think the int one is the actual um, name. I think it's ice um, is the name of the instruction. Um, those are single byte instructions that you can just throw anywhere um, to, uh, you know, uh, hook certain functionalities. So for example, GDB inserts uh, int3 hex CC to set breakpoints in software, but you could create a module that changes what um, int3 does instead of causing a SIG trap, as is the normal functionality of the Linux kernel, int3 could run your custom code that, for example, um, records where functions are jumping. I once, um, with a friend of mine, wrote a kernel module where combined with a custom loader that would replace the beginning of every function with int3 and the, uh, um, the end of every function with int1 or vice versa, um, would basically keep track of what functions were calling each other and make sure that control flow didn't get hijacked, for example. Um, you can do crazy stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> you can also do even crazier stuff like hook the uh, um, interrupt that happens when you uh, trigger invalid code. Usually that causes a sig ill to be delivered to your process as you I'm sure have painfully found out in the ROP and shell coding modules. Um, but uh, with a kernel module, you could make that do anything. I think it's interrupt six. Um, don't quote me on that. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it is, um, a hookable interrupt and it has been used by security researchers to like retrofit security. Um, actually one of my students, you can click this, this, uh, uh, link and go to, um, his video of, um, the research that, um, he did to, to retrofit, uh, safer reads and writes by using undefined instructions and, and abusing undefined instructions to basically create them in software. Um, usually this is a bespoke interaction method. No one um, really ships production modules that, that do that. Um, one interaction method that is used uh, quite a lot is uh, files. So um, the most common way, in fact, of interacting with modules is uh, that the module creates a file um, or registers a um, device file somewhere on the file system. And this somewhere can be slash dev. This was the traditional um, place to create device files. If you look at slash dev right now, what's going on? If you look in slash dev on your Linux system, there's a lot of stuff. For example, this is a file representing my hard drive. Uh, and I can actually open it if I'm root. I'm a little afraid to do that, um, but I could open it and, and actually stream out my hard drive contents uh, using cat, for example. Just normal interaction is just a file. Um, CD-ROM is you know my uh, CD drive, uh, DVD drive, and yes, this computer has a DVD drive um, and so on. So there's a lot of different um, devices here that that talk directly to kernel modules, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also slash proc. You have uh, played around with slash proc. Well, uh, slash proc is also a place for, um, it started out as a place to get information about running processes. 
in Linux, it kind of expanded into this mess of um, kernel module interactions, a lot of kernel modules and so forth. And then a lot of that got moved into slash sys, but you can still create um, files in slash proc from within kernel modules and um, have user space interact with them. To interact with the um, module through a file, you just call open. That's it's that simple. You call open and then either read, write, or um, I'll talk about alternatives later. Um, and you can interact with these modules. All right, read, write, very simple. So in kernel space, you can register a read handler and a write handler for the file that you register um, for your module. And then you can do stuff, normal stuff, like read in, uh, that's a invalid read, one sec. Let me fix that. All right, um, in user space, you <clears throat> can read from that file and um, that will cause your uh, kernels handlers to uh, be called and um, uh, the read will be handled by your, sorry, your kernel modules handler functions that you register um, in the module. Um, this is useful for modules that deal with uh, like blobs of data, like a microphone. <clears throat> so if you have a module for a microphone or module for a camera um, and someone starts reading from it, that's exactly what, what um, this interface is for. There's a more advanced interface that um, uses what is called um, IO uh, control, right? IOCTL. Um, IOCTL is a system call, of course, that provides a much more um, um, flexible interface. One sec, I'm having hardware problems. This, uh, my mouse just broke, so I can't advance a slide. There we go, we're back. Okay, so IOCTL uh, provides a much more flexible interface. Um, basically, you register an IOCTL handler um, and uh, from user space, you still open the file as normal and you invoke an IOCTL syscall with that file descriptor, a command code, and this is a command code that's defined or that's checked by the function in the kernel module um, so it's a custom command code and you can send arbitrary data, right? This is very flexible, also very dangerous. This data is very easy to mishandle in the kernel, causing a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, a lot of vulnerabilities come from IOCTL, um, uh, like badly implemented IOCTL handlers in kernel modules. Um, this uh, interface is useful for setting uh, and, and, and retrieving like non-stream data. So if you have a webcam driver, you might uh, stream out the video using a um, just read, you know, uh, uh, using a read syscall and an appropriate read handler in the kernel module. But you might retrieve and set options such as resolution, color balance, and so forth using IOCTL as an example. All right. So. Let's say once you, uh, inter uh, you trigger some interaction with the kernel, you open the, the file, you write uh, stuff into the file, read from it or whatever, what does the kernel module do? Um, the kernel module can do anything, right? Um, because it is running in ring zero. Uh, but typically, kernel modules are fairly well behaved. Um, <clears throat> typically, it'll read um, something uh, for, from your process. Um, for example, if you're using IOCTL, it will read um, that um, uh, your provided data. Um, and we'll ta look at, at copy uh, from user and copy to user in a sec. Um, it'll do stuff. Um, so it'll open files, uh, you know, read from files, interact with hardware, do all sorts of, of, of uh, whatever it's driver stuff that it does. And then it'll write the data back to user space using copy to user. Again, very common in IOCTL, but, but also how um, uh, read is handled. So this is how write would be handled. This is how read is handled. And then it returns to user space. Very cool stuff. All right, 
So how do you compile uh, modules? Um, you compile modules. Uh, there's guides online you can follow, but again, we created a uh, simple environment for you called Pwn Kernel under the Pwn College GitHub organization. Um, it's very simple. <clears throat> um, here we are in Pwn Kernel. If we go into source, I have a bunch of modules here. You just run build and it'll build all of them, deploy them into um, the kernel. Um, so actually this is incorrect. Let me fix that real quick. Should say build that as a Okay, so um, if you want to create your own kernel module benefiting from the Pwn College um, uh, framework here, you go into source. This is where our kernel modules live. You, there's a bunch of temporary files in here, but um, you can uh, create, this is the simplest one. I'll, I'll show it to you in a sec. And create hello, uh, or let's say yawn module.c. Okay, you added the make file and just add yawn module.o here. I don't know why .o for these, but just, just do it. And it's that simple. Then you do a build. And then um, Pwn kernel will go through, build everything, including your module and deploy it in the running kernel, or sorry, deploy it in a new user space file system where you can then call launch to start the kernel and all of the um, modules are right here. So here's the module.ko. Awesome stuff. Okay, so we've created a module. So um, how do we uh, load a module? Okay, so I'm going to um, show you actually, let's kill the, this. Oh, I shouldn't have, well, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's see what yawn module is. Yawn module, or really, I just copied it from hello log, that module, is the smallest possible kernel module. All it does, oops, I forgot to show you my screen. Yawn module is the smallest possible uh, kernel module, uh, hello log that C rather. All it does is print um, uh, to the kernel log, hello, and then print goodbye. Hello is printed when it is loaded. Goodbye is printed when it is unloaded, right? So let's launch the kernel. Here we go, we're inside our tiny machine. Yeah, uh, here is hello log. How do you load uh, modules? Very easy, ins mod, um, or realistically the init module system call takes a file name and so forth. You can look at the man page, but it's usually done through the ins mod utility. Of course, you have to um, have the right capabilities. Realistically, we have to be uh, more or less root norm normally. Um, luckily, we are root right now in my configuration of this VM. So I can do ins mod hello log and again very simple all it does is log on init log on cleanup and here we go i'm loaded it and it's uh gives me this log okay awesome what's next listing modules i did this at the beginning of the video but we can ls mod is and we can see that this is the only module i have loaded and where it's loaded actually which is very useful okay what else Removing modules, so I can remove this module using rm mod, rm mod hello log, and it says goodbye to me. Very polite. Okay, ls mod is no longer there. I can ins mod it again. It's back, and I can rm mod it again. Awesome. All right, that was uh, nice and simple. Um, now um, I'm going to take a couple of minutes and run through a couple of example modules. We just looked at hello log. It's very simple. Again, kernel development sounds scary, but you can write a module with just this, right? And you have code execution in the kernel. That's awesome. So, um,
All right, let's see what else we got. Um, let's look at hello dev char. So this basically just creates a character device, uh, a device file that we can read and write from. Um, let's take a quick look. It's a little more complicated. Um, so you can see it has a couple of more functions. Um, things are a little more complicated. One thing that it does is do this register character device. A character device is basically just a device that you can read one character at a time from or however many characters at a time from, as opposed to a block device where you have to read certain amounts of blocks. Um, a block device is like a hard drive, for example. A character device is like a microphone. Um, when this module is initialized, it registers a character device called Pwn College. Um, but it registers it um, uh, in a way that we still have to create the device file in slash dev. Um, and it'll actually tell us how to do that. When we call register device, it receives a major number. This is um, an identifier, kind of like a file descriptor. Um, in users, in a very different way, it is a... Um, a, a, a number that says this is your device when when um, uh, a device with that identifying number is opened our kernel module will be invoked and then it registers this file operations struct file operation struct has a bunch of uh, function pointers to read write open and release so open gets called when the file is opened, release gets called when the file is closed, read and write gets called when the file is read from or written to. And here we can see something very, very simple here. We do a, a device read, uh, the, uh, or when the device is opened, all we do is log that it's been opened. When it's closed, all we do is log that it's been closed. When uh, the device has been, is being read from, um, we uh, just, return um, the uh, string hello pwn college and we return um, uh, we, we use copy to user copy to user is a kernel function that copies data back into user space uh, safely um, so the data the destination is whatever this this uh, buffer pointer that we were passed in we copy the message, uh, hello, Pwn College, and the length. And this is how we output to the user uh, <clears throat> um, uh, the, the, the data that they're going to read, right? And this driver doesn't actually support write. It just says it returns an E and val error code. And these are the error codes that you keep getting in REX from the syscalls, right? This error code, this is how much uh, it will have um, uh, written, I think copy to user returns how much is left to write out of this amount um, if it fails to write the whole thing all at once. Um, and so this returns how much uh, it has written. Of course, this needs to line up or read will act very strangely. All right, so um, that's basically it. Let's um, ins mod Hello, uh, oops, is over here. We, um, ins mod hello dev char. Okay, so it says, okay, we registered number, measure number 248. Let's create a device file, mknod is uh, um, a make node. It creates a device file um, and this says character device and this is the major number, that identifier that this module was assigned when it called register device. Um, right here, register character device. Um, we run this. Okay, now we have a uh, device. If we read from this, we will get hello Pwn College. So let's do head here. Hello Pwn College. Pretty cool, huh? Um, why do we have a whole bunch of, of uh, hello Pwn Colleges? Because uh, head will keep reading until it, it reads some amount of lines. That's what head does. If he had done cat, we would just be sitting here forever. Um, if you wanted to read it just once, there's a shell utility DD. 
it takes a weird argument format, if, and we have the input files, dev, pwn college, char, of, dev std out. We give it a byte size to read. It'll read 128 at a, a bytes at a time and to say read only once. And uh, where's our output? There it is. So we output it to a uh, file description one, and here we go. All right, cool. So that is our um, uh, character device. There's a, a similar one for a proc device. Instead of in slash dev, we use proc create. This is much simpler because it automatically creates the device. And then it'll tell us that's been created. And then we can interact with it in exactly the same way. The rest is the same. It just changes where it creates it. It's a different module, so let's ins mod hello proc char. Uh, what's going on? Why didn't it print? Let's restart the kernel. Maybe there's some bug in a different module. Okay, here we go. Hello proc char. There we go. Why didn't it? Well, it created it. I don't know why it didn't print. Same thing. So the, here it auto creates it, and now we can um, uh, write, read from it. Um, let's look at one other one, and that is the IO CTL way of interaction. And this one is um, kind of. Uh, a little crazier so we um, hmm. actually let's save this IOCTL demo because we're go going on to 30 minutes for the next module well I'll I will show it off in or sorry for the next video where I'll show it off in the context of a different module this make root that C that's going to be an awesome way of showing off an actual kernel exploit. Okay. Or not an actual kernel exploit, but a little backdoor in the kernel. So that is, um, all for our quick, quick, uh, crash course into kernel modules. Um, of course, for the challenge problems in this, uh, module, you'll, you'll mostly be interacting with kernel modules, trying to, Use them to help you retrieve a flag inside your emulator. Thanks for watching.